Yin Yang is perhaps the most known and most documented concept used within Taoism. The theory of Yin Yang is, we can say, a philosophical framework describing what people in China have long observed in nature and the material world. Yin Yang perception dates from the third century BCE or even earlier. And it is fundamental concept in Chinese philosophy, in Chinese medicine, and in culture in general. Yin Yang also represented in the Yi Jing, the Book of Changes, a Chinese prophecy text that dates back 2000 to 750 BC and is still used today. As such, Yin Yang theory is rooted in many schools of thought, and we can find examples of it everywhere. Yin Yang symbol seems at first to be characterized by an everlasting polarity that could also be understood as duality or dialectic. Yin stands for the descending, contracting, closing, passive movement and is represented in black. Yang stands for the ascending, expanding, opening, active movement and is represented in white. We as humans can observe and recognize those two principles of movement in our daily lives and in nature. The word yin comes out to mean shady side, a young sunny side. Yin yang is the concept of duality forming a whole. We encounter examples of yin and yang every day. And one of the principles of yin and yang is that all things exist as inseparable and contradictory opposites. For example, female, male, dark, light, old, young. The pairs of equal opposites attract and complement each other. Symbolically left stands for the receptive, the passive yin, the feminine, symbolically right, represents the creative, the active, yang, the masculine. Only in the harmonious yet dynamic balance between left and right, between the receiving and the creating, between yin and yang, between inhalation and exhalation, can the kingdom be entered. The polarizing and the destructive effect of this world will then be transformed into connecting and creative force. Therefore, yin-yang is always a comparative relationship. We cannot have one without the other. And something is always more yin in comparison to yang. It cannot be yin or yang, but yin yang. However, as the yin yang symbol illustrates, each side has at its core an element of the other. Neither pole is superior to the other. And as an increase in one beings, a corresponding decrease in the other. A correct balance between the two poles must be reached to achieve harmony. And if we look more deeply at the symbol, we also realize that the polarity of the two forces of yin yang is very subtly carried by a third aspect, by an internal harmony, a secret order, the Tao. Yin Yang reminds us that there is a natural order in the universe 
and that the productivity comes from harmony. And when this harmony is broken, problems and diseases often occur. The question now becomes, is it possible to maintain the harmony and balance in the world we live in today? Even if we do achieve the balance for a short period of time, that balance is always shaky. It is not stable and it will be broken sooner or later. Structures in which we all are involved in our lives are always pulled out of the middle again and the cycle never ends. So why is the middle so important to us? You probably notice that in every village, the church is typically located in the middle. All primitive tribes make a circle in which they are dancing in the middle, or a ritual is performed in the middle. The labyrinth on the church floor leads to the middle in a garden or park or on the square. There is always a well in the middle. The magic of the center is connected to that of the circle. A cryptic statement, God is a circle whose center is everywhere and circumference now here, is a striking paradox. In her classical work, The Secret Doctrine, Helena Blavatsky wrote, the primordial form of everything manifested from atom to globe from man to angel is Ferodia, the sphere that is in all nations, the emblem of eternity and infinity, a serpent swallowing its tail. To realize the meaning, however, the sphere must be taught as seen from its center. The field of vision or of thought is like a sphere with limits proceeding from oneself in every direction and extend out into space, opening up boundless vistas all around. A center is the primary organizing principle in all creation. It brings unity and coherence. Everything that rotates has a center around which it rotates. A center holds together the system of which it is the center by vibration or energy it emits. If that hard coincidence with the heart of creation, if we live according to the divine idea, there is harmony between mankind and cosmos. We live from the middle and return there again and again as co-creators. But when a false center, the ego, assign itself the role of being the center of everything, chaos arises, the structure falls apart, and a human being can no longer maintain himself in the spiritual area, and therefore ends up in matter. That's where the pendulum starts moving. Where it goes to the extreme and swings to the other way again. That is a law. If the pendulum swings all the way to the left, it must also swing all the way to the right. And we are struck in the inevitable pendulum swing. That is the situation describing the state of humanity on earth right now. But things are starting to change slowly. The awareness grows that the middle is essential to take a new step. The middle is not only surrounded by a circle. No, the middle is also the place where the pendulum can come to rest where silence reigns. In that silence, we can seek the connection with the higher middle, with 
a transcending center. At that point, there is no longer the image of the point and the circle, but there is the image of the tree of life, an opportunity for the soul to ascend. The awareness is growing that we must go back to that middle to be able to make a quantum leap in consciousness by raising vibration. And then the circle becomes the transition to a higher spiral, transcending polarity and duality. According to Jung, a real symbol always occurs when it is necessary to express something that the mind cannot think of or that can only be guessed or felt. The symbol of the circle of turning around a center is therefore about that middle. In Taoism, Tao is the middle from which everything is manifested and to which everything must return. Tao is unthinkable, unknowable, remains hidden. In the Taoist vision on transformation and inner alchemy, the path is called the way of the king. This is expressed in the Chinese character for king that you see pictured and that is pronounced as Wang. The top horizontal stroke symbolizes the yang or heaven the button stroke, the yin or earth. Together they make the world of duality possible. The middle horizontal stroke symbolizes the yong, the timeless center in the heart of all creation. It does not move itself, but it makes the interaction between yin and yang possible. The vertical stroke, symbolizes the power of Tao called Dei, T-E. This force flows from the one into the world of duality and back again. The core of human being is not only in heaven, yang, or on earth, yin, but in the immovable center, yang, that connects yin and yang. The yang symbol is also regarded as a reflection of Tao. The yang is the point where yin and yang are in balance with each other, the place where the earth grounds heaven and where heaven elevates the earth. Furthermore, we can say that the distinction between man and woman exists only in the dimensions of the body and personality. In the dimensions of the soul and the spirit, there is no separation of the sexes. Both sexes are equivalent and both have male and female attributes. Masculine is understood to mean creative, positive, young, and feminine is characterized with words such as receiving, negative, or and yin. The Gnostic path goes much higher and deeper than balancing the masculine and feminine aspects of the personality. Because the intention is that the dimensions of the soul and of the spirit are going to express themselves in the dimensions of the personality and the physical body, whereby a total renewal can take place called transfiguration. When we listen to the Gnostic words with intellectual interest, an activity of the head, or with an intense yearning, an activity of the heart, or, and this is a third possibility, with both interest and yearning, an activity of both head and heart, then in all three cases, the Gnostic light power will enter our being and influence the system of our personality. If 
because of our purely intellectual interest, this power enters the head only. An understanding will develop, but neither our blood nor our nerve ether will be able to absorb it because the heart is not cooperating. The understanding, therefore, will merely be added to the intellectual storage as usual. The light power inhaled will be stored in our system and will have to be stored for a long time, even causing a danger. If, as it is often the case, there is a working of the heart only, and no or too little understanding, then the inhaled light power is taken up via the breastbone and the thymus gland into the blood, the nerve ether, and the internal secretion. Thus the person in question immediately experiences a strong tension, a feeling of being driven on. But because there is no understanding, he does not know what to do with the tension he feels. So in this case, also great danger arise. All owning to one thing, accepting power, but not knowing how to react, not knowing what to do with it. So there remains only one correct basis on the liberating path both yearning and interest existing side by side. And when this is the case, the greatest possibilities can develop. The heart is the seat of the rose. The head is the seat of the mind and the spirit. The centers in the hands are the organs of action and the centers in the feet are the organs of movement. Therefore, as long as the human mind is bound in activity of yin or yang, it cannot perceive the Tao. If one simply perceives both the movements of yin and the movements of yang in the mind without judgment, one stands neither in yin nor in yang. The space of awareness is itself unmoved, neither concentrating nor projecting, and therefore awareness sinks in this stillness to the ground, the Tao. Because of the constant interaction between yin and yang, everything that exists becomes sharpened, polished, and refined. It undergoes a process of transformation followed by an inner alchemy. Eventually, as a result of this, the whole universe shall become sanctified and glorified, after which everything returns to Tao. The art in this alchemical process is to keep the yang in the center pure, while heaven and earth, yin and yang, above and below, through their mutual interaction, transform the matter. This is made possible by the vertical inflowing power of Dei, the energy of Tao. The Dei makes the transmutation of the 10,000 things possible. That is, in the alchemic, alchemical meaning of the word. Because according to Taoist creation story, from Tao, the one arose, from the one, the two, and from there, the 10,000 things. Anyone who views the movement of yin yang in nature and in himself without awareness of the Tao experiences an internally battling duality within and without. However, 
when in unmoved awareness, the nature of Tao begins to reveal itself in the observer, he is then able to perceive in the movement of yin yang, the reflection of an evolving polarity that forms a divine trinity in Tao. Also, in the pure awareness of the natural breathing in and breathing out, the actual triad of the underlying creative nature reveals itself. The pure awareness of the inner state of disorientation, of not knowing where to go, is the beginning of the end of disorientation. The end of disorientation does not lie outside of disorientation. It lies in pure awareness of the inner state of disorientation. The end of the human riddle does not lie outside of the human being. It lies in the simple awareness of his very nature. 